Hi Hope community, how would you answer this question? For your birthday, let's say you're given a gift to go skydiving. After you're able to work up the guts to go, now you find yourself 12,000 feet up in the air, staring down at the earth below. The instructor tells you, jump. Well, your heart is beating out of your chest as your mind races through different scenarios. And for a split second, you hesitate. Do you take the leap into the unknown or do you cling to the safety of the plane? More on that in a moment. When you hit the like and subscribe and share button below, you'll become part of our HOPE community. And you'll also be able to help people all around the world. There's also another way that you can join the HOPE community is by giving with us as an act of worship. Just go to hopepd.org and hit the giving button. So enough on that. Let's get into it. Watch this. Whether you imagine yourself jumping or staying in the plane, that moment of hesitation is what we're talking about today. It's called a crisis of belief. It's about choosing between comfort and safety versus faith and action, when God extends an invitation to join Him. Well, we're in a series called Appetite for Authenticity, and today's episode is about reality number five, God's invitation leads to a crisis of belief. See, if we took a poll of a thousand people and asked them, if you could experience God in your life, would you want to? Well, the majority of people, I'm sure, would say yes. The good news is, is that God wants that for us as well. The difficulty is we live in a world that chases comfort and safety. See, our society chooses routine over risk, opting for the familiar rather than embracing new challenges, or convenience over connection, that's using technology to simplify tasks by missing out on human interaction. Or echo chambers over diverse opinions. That's sticking to the familiar voices on social media rather than seeking out different perspectives. Or what about this one, job security over passion. That's when we choose a job that's stable with uninspiring work over pursuing a job with your true interests or silence over difficult conversations. That's when, uh, where we avoid topics that might provoke disagreement or discomfort. Or what about this one? Helicopter parenting over child independence. That's when we are more concerned about the protecting of our kids from uh, every potential harm instead of allowing them room to grow and learn and even fail or hoarding over investment, keeping finances in the safe zone rather than taking calculated risk for greater reward. Or what about this one? Health anxiety over balanced living. That's where we obsess over wellness to the point that it stifles the joy and spontaneity of life. And last, analysis paralysis over decisive action. This is where you don't make a decision because you're overthinking everything because of too much information? So it's clear that we live in a world that often values comfort and safety over transformative experiences. But what happens when we're presented with an invitation that challenges these priorities? Well, today we're diving into how these invitations from God forces us and confronts us to deal with the crisis of belief and pulls us out of the complacency of the, uh, of the known and into the boundless potential of the unknown. We're not the only ones, by the way, that struggle with this. Several people in the Bible faced a crisis of belief where they had to accept God's invitation or choose safety and comfort. Let me give you an example. Here's some of them. Sarah. Sarah laughed when God told her that she was going to have a child at 90. I mean, talk about a crisis of belief. Or Rahab. 
She was a Canaanite prostitute who had to decide whether to hide Israelite spies, which put her faith in their God over her people, or Gideon, who doubted his ability to lead and ask God for signs. And what about this one? Mary, the mother of Jesus, who faced an enormous crisis of belief when she was told she would conceive Jesus, she chose faith over societal judgment. Peter, here's another one, faced a crisis of belief when he denied Jesus three times before the crucifixion. Later, he had to reaffirm his faith and commitment. Ruth, who chose to leave her homeland and go with her mother-in-law, Naomi, putting her faith in the God of Israel. Thomas, known for his skepticism, he had to confront his doubts when Jesus appeared to him after the resurrection. What about Jonah? Ran away from uh, God's command to prophesy to the city of Nineveh? His crisis of belief came inside the belly of a large fish. And what about the Samaritan woman, encountered Jesus at the well and had to decide whether to accept his offer of living water despite her checkered past. See, every one of these people had a turning point when they had to respond to their crisis of belief to either trust or stay with the status quo. Anytime God leads you to do something that has a God-sized dimension, you'll face a crisis of belief. And when you face a crisis of belief, what you do next, catch that, what you do next reveals what you really believe about God. See, if you find yourself in a crisis of belief, here are four things that you're gonna experience. It will require a faith to move forward. Second one is, it will look like a God-sized crisis. Third one is, it will show what you really believe about God. And the last one, it will require action. See, James said the same is true with faith. Without action, faith is useless. By itself, it is as good as dead. If we're being honest with ourselves, we would all agree that we have a natural tendency to try to build a life in which faith is unnecessary. We strive for control, but the problem with this strategy is that it's not pleasing to God. He'll allow things into our lives that drive us to utter dependence upon Him. Then and only then will we see His power and His glory. See, your faith doesn't rest on a concept or an idea. Your faith has to be centered on a person, God. Here's what I mean by that. Church people talk a lot about faith and all you need is faith. Uh, you know, just if you're dealing with something, you just need to have faith. This is an abstract teaching. Faith in itself is a pursuit. It, it doesn't matter, therefore, what the faith is based on, they're saying, only that there is an act of believing. But that's not really what the scripture is meaning at all. Faith is only valid if its focus is God and what he's purposing to do. Jesus said in John 14, uh, if his followers have faith in God, they will do even greater things than he has done. Our faith in God must be based on his power, not our human wisdom. See, all the biblical characters that we listed were people that got this. They understood that they were placing their faith in God to pull it off, not their own abilities. Here's the point. When God speaks, he always reveals what he's going to do, not what he wants us to do for him. That's why Paul said this, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. See, we join God so he can work through us. Just look, for example, at Moses when God told him to go and do uh, just a God-sized uh, opportunity. See, God wasn't asking Moses to go to do this for him. He was asking Moses to go and be used of God, and God would work through him. Moses could have never delivered the Israelites from Pharaoh's army, crossed the Red Sea on dry land, provided water from a rock, or furnished uh, bread and meat to all these people without the power of God. I mean, God wanted Moses to see his power and his glory through him. See, when God invites you to join him and you face a crisis of belief, what you do next reveals what you believe about God. What you do, not what you say you believe, reveals what you really believe about God.
Are you presently experiencing a crisis of belief? If you are, what is God asking you to do? What is it that keeps you from having action? What does your walk with God reveal about what you believe about him? What is the evidence of God at work in you and, and with him through your life? Is there something in your life you are struggling to turn over to God? How is God presently seeking to increase your faith in him? All great questions. And we need to reflect on those and really answer those honestly. See, there's a true story of a guy who was a sprinter and was set to represent his country in the 100 meter race at the Olympics. However, he discovered that the heats for his primary event were scheduled on Sunday, a day that he committed to God and considered sacred to him. This posed a, a significant crisis of belief for him, that turning point. Should he compromise his faith and convictions for the sake of his career and country, or should he uphold his faith even if it meant giving up his Olympic dreams? He chose faith over fame and decided not to participate in that event. Instead, he switched to the 400 meter race, which had heats on, the, on a different day. Now, this was considered risky because 400 meter was not his strongest event, but he felt he needed to put his faith into action regardless of the outcome. Remarkably, he wasn't only competitive in the 400 meter race, he won the gold medal. Setting a new Olympic record, his decision to stand by his convictions, even in the face of immense pressure, became an inspirational story of faith and integrity. So much so that they made a film about it called Chariots of Fire. Bottom line is, Eric Little's story is a powerful example of how a crisis of belief can lead to a defining moment requiring both faith and action. As we close, let's remember that every crisis of belief is not a stumbling block, but a stepping stone. Not a wall that blocks our path, but a door waiting to be opened. These moments aren't designed to break us, but to forge us into stronger, more resilient people for God's purpose. So when we stand at that intersection of doubt and faith, take a deep breath and choose the path that will reveal what you believe about God. For in doing so, you're not just finding your way, you're defining it. Let's shine bright, walk bold, and let our journey inspire others to do the same. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for this day. Will you help us as we enter into those crisis of belief moments in our life that we would choose beyond comfort and the familiar, we would choose, Father, to risk it all because you are calling us to do something that is immense and amazing. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Well, if you didn't catch last week's, uh, you can go here. And if you wanna check out the whole series, you can go here. I hope to see you next week, either online or on campus.